Okay, here's a turbine update. Um, here I have uh, a few things to talk about that are just the direction I've been going on this. Again, this is a dual axial flux um, bare bones unit that I'm going to put on eBay for one dollar no reserve. This is for those of you that haven't watched. It's going to be uh, no magnets, no stator, but you're going to have a seven seven eighths um, plate, magnet plate. This is a pair. There's two quarter inch plates. They're quarter inch thick, and I'm actually going to put a third plate on there. That's something I want to discuss. I've cut out some blanks, and I'm going to add a third plate so so a person can run two stators. We're going to discuss that in a little more detail later. Um, but uh, again, grease zerks went to all moving um, parts. We've got the the main shaft here, and then I've got outer seals, but no inner seals. And you can it, it will become greased, but um, just know that you're you're going to be able to grease it. I figured that was important to add. And then um, uh, the other thing I want to mention about it that I've done here is uh, I mentioned the third plate that's going on there. I'm going to go over in detail in another video how the back of this assembly is going to be put together with these plates because I did spacers for myself on my turbine because if I needed a specific uh, dimension I could just put that on there machine it down to exactly what I want and then put the other plate on and bolt it around. There's six bolts that will be going that, that will reef those two plates together, right? Um, but on your end you're going to want a little option there so I'm going to I'm going to go into that in a little more detail later I just want to point out that there is a system where you'll you'll use these studs and and be able to adjust basically the the distance between the plates or the stator so that will they, they will be able to run along that length within reason um, there's going to be there's going to be a limit to that range but it's going to accommodate most magnets and that's kind of the thought process there we'll get into that later sorry I got a little wordy um, uh, I just don't want to show you how the shaft goes together. I think that's kind of interesting, so I'd like to show it to you. Um, uh, no damage done. Don't worry about that. Um, all right, so here's here's a hub, and here's the the shaft um, that I put in there. Um, it all comes together, gets pressed in from the back like that. That's the front. That's where the blades will go. And um, what I do is. I take this one inch shaft, again 25 millimeter on that side, one inch on this side, the whole thing's about 12 and a half inches. This collar is about three quarters inches wide. It's inch and a half diameter. Um, it's DOM. There's a, oh, an eighth inch hole that's drilled all the way through the shaft and then it's tapped out quarter 28. That's, an, that's a number eight hardened um, bolt that goes directly into the shaft. That prevents it from moving backwards and forwards. The whole thing is then put onto the a lathe and machined true on this side with a little chamfer there and then um, and then I press a bearing on slide a spacer I'll discuss spacer in a moment and then press the other bearing on on this side and I should actually mention it doesn't actually happen in that sequence this bearing is pressed on this is pressed into the back of here and then the spacer is slid on and then the bearing is pressed into the, the other side and the whole system is pressed toward the back and let me tell you what I mean by toward the back um, in here you'll see a, a space between these two grooves. Uh, that is, I, I measured that with the calipers and that would be the, the depth that I make a little uh, spacer that goes between the two inner races of the bearings. Here's a bearing. Something about these bearings is they have a little bit of a radius. And I'm, I'm leave, I've got about 30, 40,000 something to that effect. Not, uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's pretty shallow, but it's enough. And with that radius, the bearing seats back an extra ten thousandths of an inch deeper than the face of the bearing. So what I do is I, I measure that out. I make it the size of, um, I basically make it 15th, uh, 15 thousandths shorter um, than that distance, giving me five thousandths of slack. Because I don't want to make sure, that the, the main thing I want to make sure that these roller bearings roll true right in the middle of the, um, the groove, right? And I want them to be unladen in there. But um, I, I press this all the way to the back so that technically I could take the the, uh, the bearing press and press it forward or backwards five thousandths of an inch. It's going to be pressed all the way back because that's the, that's the pressure that the bearing the the um, excuse me the wind turbine blades are pressing on it. And I don't want any play. Be, I don't want the the flux gap to be adjusted front or back by that play. It won't be. It's pressed. I mean I, I'm going. I'm telling you this little detail because I want to know. I want you to know how I do it, but know that there will be no play, no discernible play. These are very accurate bearings. We're going to check it 
run out and then play at the end of, um, once I complete the whole thing because there wouldn't be much point in checking. Right now I can tell there's virtually none. Um, these bearings are very, very accurate. These bearings, by the way, are recycled. Um, they are perfectly good. They are changed as part of a, a uh, you know, I'm going to give you, you, you won't hear anything. I've inspected them. I blast all the grease out of them and, uh, and they are truly cleaned out and they are packed with fresh grease. I've got a seal on the outside but not on the inside of the hub because I've got the grease zerk, right? And that way the grease can run out toward the bearing. So that's that. And the only other detail to mention about the process is coming together. Sorry, this is kind of wordy, but this, uh, you guys like details. So I use a little silicone and I run that along the inside, which is completely unnecessary. But that presses the back and make it makes a little ledge right there. So when you are pressing grease in there, there is a, a it's like a piston in a, in a sleeve. There's no there's pressure there and it'll have to come out the seals. It's definitely not coming around there and that's also the main idea is to keep water out of there. I want to make sure that that area is very very clean so um, overkill but kind of fun to do and that's how that works. So um, at this point I've got the one I just showed you done with two magnet plates there. I've got four more pairs of magnet plates and I've got these two kind of prepped out I've got two shafts made here, and I've got two more blank hubs, right? Um, the bare bones unit's going on eBay. I got to figure out the rest. And these, I may do something else, like a, a slightly different design, maybe, maybe like a straight shot, kind of like the original turbine I sent to Muddy. If you guys have been watching Muddy's um, channel and seeing seeing what he's done there, um, I've got. The original one was just a straight shot, no furling. It just went straight back and and uh, will run a single pair of rotors um, on the back. And this one I'm thinking I'll do a third rotor and you'll have a brake rotor or something like that. Um, and maybe there'll be a, some mechanism for furling in the future, but I kind of like a straight shot turbine. So that's what I think I'm going to do with that. But I wanted to give you an update, just tell you what's going on. And I'm going to show you some video at the end and just kind of go through the process on you. Um, thanks very much. Till next time. And make sure you make a comment. I definitely want to know who you are. I see, you know, if there's 100 people watching. There should be 100 comments on there. You got to tell me who you are. Um, I do appreciate all the, the interaction on this. I say that every time. Um, but what else? Um, yeah, again, this is going on eBay for a dollar no reserve. And I don't want to be greedy and I'm pushing on that but if when I when this does happen I, I humbly ask that you go ahead and use your networks and try and you know spread around make sure people know about this um, because I think it's kind of fun and exciting and, I, and I'm hoping it goes to one of you guys that I I talk to all the time um, and try and you know put it up and do some video of it I mean obviously we'd want to see what you do with it. So we're hoping it goes to one of us. <laughs> but uh, it's eBay, so it just goes out to the planet. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. Till next time. And uh, watch for the, uh, the, the footage coming up. Okay, so here you can see that 5C collet index. Um, and I've added the tailstock to it to hold the shaft um, in there nice and firm. And, um, and the convenient thing is I can drill it out eighth inch on uh, both sides rather than just plunge the drill bit all the way through I go about halfway down flip it around 180 degrees and do it again and then that's eighth inch um, all the way through and then uh, I switch it over to a seven six excuse me a seven thirty seconds uh, drill bit which is just a tiny bit larger than necessary to tap out um, quarter 28 and then I put that that bolt in there and I, I'm just hand tapping there I've got the belt off and I'm hand tapping it <clears throat> so um, and then there's a finished view. I've got um, uh, the hole on the other end there. And I put the little bolt in and moved it over to the lathe to just clean up these two surfaces so that they are nice and square so that um, the plate and the, uh, the rear bearing uh, match up for the inner race of the rear bearing. So, and then I kind of just chamfer the edges there. Just, just a little cleanup operation. Um, let's see, just kind of showing you what I'm doing here. Yeah, now there's that spacer. I've got a little spacer that goes in between. That, that's one I mentioned. I, I, um, 
I basically make it um, over five um, five thousand so that it just gives me just a little bit of room there and then I press it all together um, in the hydraulic press and that ends up getting pressed back a little bit oh and here <clears throat> here's that pin so it's basically just a, a half inch bolt that um, that I kind of clean up to make it look pretty you know that's important and um, <clears throat> and then I drill it out and uh, put a hole in the side and then put put a little groove in it again um, um, the the grease fittings are also quarter 28 so I don't have to change tooling out all the time that's kind of the uh, one of the sizes I like to use so same drill bits same taps I can have one in a hand tap one in the you know one in a, a tapping head on the machine tool and everything else so there's a bunch of different uh, ways to do that so oh and look what showed up in the mail <laughs> falcon blades three of them um, and the hub and I got two rectifiers um, just in the middle of the project so I figured I'd run out and do a little video of this very exciting these things are uh, <clears throat> I saw a few of you guys have had them and and they were successful so I, I just couldn't resist and it's hard to squeak the money out of them so all right so the plasma torch um, I'm gonna rough cut a few circles here um, and then I have a small step ladder um, I'm outside for ventilation I'm gonna let the audio um, on then, uh, I have taken and, uh, enjoy a square and found the center on this and drilled out a quarter inch hole by checking from this side that side and all that and then I took a uh, center punch and a hammer went ahead and put a little hammered a little notch in there used a drill bit cut it out a quarter inch I don't need to show you that you know, kind of get the idea <clears throat> but this then I made a very amateurish but functional circle cutter now I'm going to do a better job of this later, but what I have here is quarter inch steel. I think it's an inch wide, and this is some kind of masonite material. It's, it doesn't burn, and so um, if you remember before, I used wood to etch that out. I'm, going to, I'm using this now, and I'll, I'll improve this design. But basically, the torch should never touch the metal, and this holds it perfectly above it. Now that's a quarter twenty um, Allen head, and there's a nut on that side, and that floats it just coincidentally with the materials I had just perfect so that my torch head does not hit that plus let me show you this I've got this in there and that drags along there and holds it up at the perfect angle so you can see that works pretty well and then um, make sure this is in view here yeah uh, I've got this obviously I'll have my helmet and gloves on for this but and that way I can control the feed rate very accurately holding pressure holding a little pressure on the torch pushing it this way and making sure that I get a very accurate circle because uh, the more accurate circle I get the less time I have to spend uh, messing around with things so um, that's that's uh, that's what it, what's happening here so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this circle and uh, get my safety gear on and let's cut that circle all right <clears throat> Everything's on.
And uh, there is a piece of steel underneath this, and this is a small aluminum ladder that I'm just holding over. I'd like to get a more permanent setup here, but, you know, this is getting it done. And I wanted it to go right to the edge, so I can gene in a little bit. I want to maximize. I didn't want to waste any metal, you know what I mean? There you go. Look at that, huh? Circle. Bunch of slag on this side, and, um... It's just a, a nice neat cut. I'll pull this aside and give you a close-up picture. All right, it's getting dark out here, so hopefully you can see this. Um, there's the edge. Does a good job. There's the part where I hit the flat, right? That's the edge of the, the, the flat steel. And there's the slag side, so I gotta hammer that off. And I was on my highest setting on this Harbor Freight plasma torch. So, keep that in mind. And that feed rate was about right. Getting your feed right is, uh, there are a lot of things that have to be right, but I've never, I've cut a bunch of steel with it, and I haven't changed the, uh, the con consumables yet. And, uh, you know, perhaps that would make a difference. I do see them getting a little worn, taking it apart, but I'm not thinking I need to do that until um, I'm having accuracy problems and I'm not having that yet. So, there's the other flat side. All right. Plasma torch.